Hey guys, it's been a few days since I made my last video, so I decided I just felt like making another one. Today's video is going to be about how to assemble your M1956 web gear. Just a disclaimer, this won't be accurate for the entire war. You will see some of this setup in the early war, and I'm just using some things like a butt pack that you won't see for some of the war, for the entirety of the war except maybe the 9th Infantry Division, I've heard. Some things I am missing, I'm missing an M1956 entrenching tool cover. That's really the only thing I'm missing. Everything else in here is basically how the US Army put it in their field manuals. I'm just replacing uh, a canteen for the M1956 entrenching tool carrier, which might honestly be more common to see two canteens as opposed to one with a carrier. So I'll just get right into the video. I'm going off of things that were used a lot and U.S. Army field manuals. So this will be kind of the proper way to do it. There will be some variation once you get into the field. Like I said before, you might not see the butt pack as much because guys are using lightweight rucksacks, which I do not have yet. So I guess bear with me. This might be more for an airsoft event or a light patrol, I guess. What you're going to want to start with is your M1956 pistol belt. This is horizontal weave, size medium, dated, I want to say 66. So the way this works is you are going to put this around your waist. Then you're going to adjust it to your size using these hooks that they have on the other side. You're going to loop it into these middle eyelets, and then it's kind of going to slide down and feed it through there like that, so that there's one end at the top and one end, I'm sorry, there's one end at each side. So that's very basically where you wanna start. I've just got it kind of somewhat sized to me. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is take an M1961 or M1956 butt pack. For the sake of the video, I'm using M1956, but M1961 was much more common. So. You're going to put this under your belt like this, and then you're going to line it up with the very center. So that's approximately uh, right there. Then you're going to just slide it under these Alice clips, or as they call them at the time, slide keepers, down like that. So this is somewhat in the center. It might be a little off. If you're going exactly like the Army says, you got to kind of line it up. And there, so if you're doing it right, you should be able to put it on just like this and it won't really sag. It's the term the army used, so it won't do that. It'll be kind of straight like that. Okay. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna attach your M1956 suspenders. The, there were three sizes, regular, R, long or large, I haven't figured that out yet, or L, and then extra long or extra large, not sure yet, XL. These are size uh, regular, as you can see right there. They're pretty easy if the mark to identify if the marking is still on there. These are dated 1969, and they are named, although the name has been scribbled out. What you're going to want to do with these is you're going to want to clip the ends into your butt pack like this. There's two little eyelets here. Come on. There we go. So you're gonna clip these ends into the butt pack. There, like that. Then you are gonna put it, the army manuals say the first or second eyelet, but that's kind of uncomfortable. So you're, I usually loop it through the third or fourth eyelet. So I'm gonna just do it through the uh, third one right there on either side. Uh, Third one. And then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna put this on. Once again, I'm saying this is from a field manual and you're gonna wanna adjust it to your size. Right now I have it at the longest it would go because this, this was supposed to go under my flak before I got a new pair because size regulars don't fit under M55s. But you're gonna lift that up, slide it through to where you want it and then you're just gonna snap it down like that. Uh, these are second, pattern, second pattern suspenders. First patterns will have this same hook 
like you see here on the back as well, whereas these have sort of a clip, which is much more secure. So you're just gonna basically do that adjusting for all of the sides so that you have this set up. Now this is where I get a little bit off book because next I'm going to put on two canteens. If you were going by the book, you would have a canteen on this side and then an M1956 entrenching tool carrier on this side. So putting on the canteens is pretty much the same as putting on the butt pack. You're just gonna kind of find a little space. You're gonna wanna bend the belt a little bit because when this is on your body, it'll all be a lot more spaced out so you can get it tighter so that you have more room to put on more stuff. So that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, some slide keepers will be pretty easy to put in. Some of them won't be. This one's a little bit tough. This is a first pattern M1956 canteen cover. You can tell because it has a cotton trim right there as opposed to nylon. Dated uh, 63. That's really hard to see. This one's pretty salty. and It's kind of sticky, which is weird. And I'm going to put on my other one. This one is very mint. I'm very glad I got this. I got this cover for 10 bucks, which is really cheap. Dated 61. Yeah. Six, at, or not, August 1960. Contract dates contradict themselves sometimes. It's kind of annoying. Uh, then gonna just slide that on there. Like I said before, you'd have an entrenching tool on that side if you're going by the book, but this is more practical because you're gonna want more water. All right, now just something extra. If you do want a uh, bayonet, this is an M8A1, pretty minty, it's very nice. Um, there's two places you can really put this. I guess in the manuals, you can put it along these uh, Eyelets along the edge. This hooks on with an M1910 hook system. So this will be a bit different to put on. That's part of the reason I wanted to show it in the video. So there's a little bit more variety. This is going to be... Yep, there it goes. Um, so this, I'm pretty sure, would go on this side. It makes more sense, and that was what it looked like in the picture. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to come from behind uh, and then flip that through. You're going to bend your belt... You're going to want to bend your belt and then feed it through the other side. Now that went on pretty easy. Some of them can be harder depending on what material you're putting it through. I know for the bottom eyelet row of flax, it can be pretty tough. But that's basically how you want to put on your bayonet if you want one. That's kind of optional. And another place I forgot is there is a place on the M1956 entrenching tool carrier that you can put it on that holds it pretty securely. Like I said before, I did not have one of those. Next up is the ammunition pouches. Both of my ammo pouches are second patterns. Uh, this one's pretty minty, dated 69, and this one's in pretty bad condition. That's almost coming off. Dated, I want to say, uh, 63. Let me check. I just got a t-shirt in there. 62. So, that doesn't really matter. Um... All right, so the way these work is just like all the rest of the things. You're just gonna hook them on in the next spot, spot over. Like that. Like I said, some slide keepers will be easy and some will be tough. This one is pretty tight. Leave it like that. It's not all the way on, but whatever. And then, same thing on the other side. I think these ones are pretty easy. Yes. You're going to put that. Sometimes the adjuster will have to go in between. It's that. All right. The first patterns of these have a metal plate in the front and an eyelet right here as opposed to down here and metal plates in the sides. Uh, second patterns are much more common, and they're the only thing I have right now, so that's why I'm using them. Okay. Oops. All right, so this is your basic gear. Oops, no, one more thing. Uh, lens attic, compass, or bandage first aid pouch. 
This is a second pattern because it has the eyelet. First patterns won't have this eyelet at all. I've heard that some have two adjusters right there for different, I guess, levels of adjusting. I've just got a uh, bandage in there right now. Can't tell the date. It's a little faded. So looking in the manuals, there's two places you can put this, but if you're in the field or looking at pictures, there's a third place that's pretty common. So basically, where they want you to put it is... Oh, dang, I can't remember right now if it's on your right or left side, I think. It might be on this side. So the way the manuals say is you're either going to put it right here or right here on this side, but that won't really leave any room for grenades. So what you see pretty commonly... This guy's putting it on these two, one of these two straps right here. You gotta make sure to put it on your non-firing shoulder because you don't want crap in your way when you go to fire your gun. Because that could get you killed, perhaps. Uh, so what would that be for me? I'm a left-handed shooter. This one is pretty tight. All right, slip that on there. Like I said, those aren't as secure. Uh, let's put that back in. One thing I did forget is these suspenders have uh, buckles right there to attach to the M56 ammo pouches. So you're just going to hold that down, and feed it through another side, and that adds an extra level of security. Right there. So, like I said, I'm missing an entrenching tool carrier, and I am missing some grenades. If you do have grenades, you're basically going to slide the spoon right through there, and you're going to attach this button around the head of it. I think that's what it's called. So it'll be kind of on either side right there. Or some manuals say you can just full fill this up with grenades. The Marines did have some three-cell grenade pouches, but I don't think the Army ever had those. So, here. This will basically be your basic Vietnam War M1956 web gear. This will work for airsoft events, like I said, or I guess light patrols if you don't want a lugger, or if you don't have a rucksack like me. I do a Marine impression, so I can just use an M41, which is a lot cheaper. But, uh, yeah. I might use this setup at an upcoming event in August. I live in Iowa, so there's not a lot of events here. There's really only two that I know about, one at the beginning of summer and one at the end. So I guess if you know of any more, let me know. I think Inbush 1969 has a fan club from Iowa. So I guess let me know if you're watching this. But uh, that's basically the video. So thanks for watching. Subscribe. Put anything I forgot in the comments. Leave any video ideas in the comments. Oh, one thing I did forget, actually. The M1956 butt pack has a slot on the bottom for a poncho. I guess straps on the bottom, so you can just strap a poncho on if you want. Like, here. And that's just kind of a normal strap. Like this. And another thing I did forget. This is an M1956 butt pack. M1961 butt packs, like I said, were much more common. They were a lot more rounded along the sides, and they had a waterproof lining in the on the inside, which this one does not have. So that's the actual end of this video, I promise. So thanks for watching.